As a former JP Morgan analyst, I can tell you, financial modeling is the backbone of some of the most exciting careers in finance. Whether it's investment banking, equity research, FP&A or credit analysis, mastering these skills is actually non-negotiable. At JP Morgan, we used to use uh, financial models to evaluate billion dollar companies, forecast companies' performance and make strategic decisions. And guess what? Employers across the board are looking for people who can turn these numbers into insights. So if you're dreaming of breaking into finance or leveling up your career, financial modeling is the key. Ready to learn how? Let's dive in. So before we get into the understanding of why financial modeling is an awesome tool to have if you want to make a career in finance, let's get started by understanding what a financial model is all about. So here we have this uh, McDonald's financial model and uh, what it does is basically a financial model would try to understand how a company like McDonald's or Netflix or any example that you may have uh, from historical standpoint. Number one, that uh, how the company has been doing historically in terms of financials, income statement, balance sheets and cash flows, how the ratios of the company have been like, is it a good company? Historically, is it generating enough ROE for the investors or not? So once you have that understanding of the historicals, what you try to do is basically figure out the forecasts of the company. So a typical financial model is broken down into two parts. One is the historical and the second part is the forecast. A financial model involves, you know, figuring out how the forecasts of a specific company will look like. And it's a very robust exercise. We also call this as a three statement financial model because we are talking about forecast of three different statements, balance sheet, income statement and cash flows, all three all together. And uh, it is not a very straightforward exercise. If you look at this financial model, there are supporting schedules like how you go about uh, figuring, up, figuring out the revenue of McDonald's, right? How about the costs of McDonald's? Likewise, there are different balance sheet items, you know, and then there would be debt-related items, shareholders' equity items. So all of that has to be forecasted very, very rigorously so that you have a professional understanding of how the company is going to perform in the future. So that's what a financial model is. It gives us an understanding about how the past looks like and how the future may look like, right? And um, as I said, it's a very professional exercise and uh, you must learn financial model. And now let's go back to this uh, reason as to why you should go about learning it, right? So what we have in front of you is that there are five different carriers which I have mentioned as a pillar which uses financial model. Number one is investment banking. Then we have equity research, credit research, corporate finance, financial planning and analysis. So what we will try to do is that we'll see how each and every role actually is about and how financial model fits into it, right? So let's get started with the first one that is investment banking. So what is investment banking by the way? So when it comes to investment banking, think of um, an investment banker like a broker, a property broker for example. So let's say there is a, a person who wants to sell a property, right? And then there is other one who wants to buy a property. Now a typical broker would basically liaison between the two and help execute this transaction, right? So in this case, the real estate broker would be doing different tasks, including negotiation, you know, due diligence, figuring out the fair value of the property and ensuring that the transaction actually takes place, right? So it has to be a win-win situation for both the buyer and the seller. So ultimately, when the transaction happens, brokers earn what is called as commissions, right? So that's how a typical real estate broker works. And if you think of this analogy, an investment banker is not very different from a real estate broker, although a bit more sophisticated. So instead of calling them as broker, let me call them as financial broker, okay? And um, what they typically do is then they help, you know, if there is one company who wants to sell their company and then there's another one who wants to buy that company a financial broker will kind of mediate or lies in between the two so on one side there's one person or one company wants to sell the other one 
wants to buy right and eventually this financial broker will perform various tasks right because this is not a uh, as as common as a property uh, when it comes to companies you have to do more advanced analysis right so you will do your essential valuation exercise uh, you will come up with your fair value of the company and then uh, you will also create financial model for the understanding the valuation of the company and then uh, you will structure the deal as to how it should go through likewise uh, we'll also do due diligence help the clients you know understand how it is important to negotiate favorable terms from uh, the company so all of that will be performed by the financial broker or the so called investment banker right and when they do that ultimately they earn commission so in all of these uh, things which we just discussed financial model becomes a most important aspect because let's say if a company wants to sell you know then investment banker will want to create a full financial model and figure out how the consolidated company will look like okay and uh, whether the synergies are good enough for uh, the returns to happen so all in all what i'm trying to say here is that the financial model here is a heart and soul of investment banking and it's not just limited to mergers and acquisitions but uh, let's say there is a lbo transaction that's going to happen likewise investment bankers come into picture so there are various ways in which investment bankers help but uh, one of them or the one tool that they absolutely absolutely need is financial modeling right so that was about uh, investment bankers let's now discuss the next one that is equity research now equity research if you look at uh, I would suggest you know look at the stock markets, Nasdaq, okay, and uh, maybe uh, NYSE or uh, you know any other major stock markets. And uh, let's say we were talking about McDonald's, right? So if you as an investor would want to invest in McDonald's stock, whether you should buy that stock for returns or not. So if you know the fair value of the stock, then you will be able to come to that conclusion whether a stock like McDonald's is a buy or a sell right now a equity research analyst typically does this type of analysis what they do is they create a financial model like that of mcdonalds they will do the valuation and then finally they recommend the stock from buy or sell perspective so this is a whole job of equity research analyst and um, they create various reports and then they advise clients and the clients would include uh, pension funds big houses right big funds Uh, it could be mutual funds it could be um, you know any endowment funds as well so all in all equity research analyst job will be to analyze the company create the financial model do the valuation suggest whether the stock is buy or sell so you can see this financial modeling here is the core of this exercise right so as an equity analyst you must know this or if you want to break into equity research roles you must understand how it operates right now let's look at the third one that is credit research now the typical role of a credit research uh, before we even discuss that when it comes to credit research think of companies like um, you know snp or uh, maybe moody's right so what their job is basically to a- assess a company from credit point of view whether a company will be able to repay their debt or not so in order to assess the credit understanding the credit statistics of the company again what they have to do is to create a financial model so instead of doing this valuation exercise they are actually doing a credit analysis where how much uh, the company is generating in terms of free cash flows whether the interest payments will actually happen or not there are various ratios that they have to also understand like the interest coverage ratio dscr i'm not going into those specific things but the key thing to note here is that again in order to come out and do the credit analysis they would need a financial model where they have a full understanding of the historicals and how to go about uh, doing the future forecast so if they understand the historicals and the future financials they would know that uh, you know whether the company will be able to repay the debt principal repayments will happen on time or not and ultimately based on that these companies like snp and moody's you know rate the companies right rate companies debt as triple a double a you know all of that so this is how it's important that financial modeling is so important for 
credit analysis kind of roles as well. Okay. Now, coming to the next one, let's discuss corporate finance, right? So, I'll discuss it here. Corporate finance. Now, what is corporate finance? When we talk about corporate finance, it can be understood in various ways. But uh, in the context of our discussion, uh, we are talking about, you know, companies' finances, right? So, let's say if you're working for uh, Johnson & Johnson's or Unilever, for example, you know, there would be finances there, right, to manage. So, which type of projects should they invest into, right? And how should they manage the cash flows, right? And uh, anything associated with finance, as in if there are new projects, current projects, how much are they giving in terms of returns? All of those type of analysis actually flow from the corporate finance department. And again, in this type of role, let's say if you have been given a project to figure out whether a project involves investments in Mexico. So, should you go about doing that or not? So, in order to understand that, again, you will have to create a financial model. But in this case, there will be a financial model of a project, right? And you will again come to the same understanding of whether you need to invest or not. And that's how this typically works. That in order to create a financial model of a company or a project, the approach more or less remains the same. So that's why this is again super important if you want to join or are looking for corporate finance roles. So let's look at the fifth one that is financial planning and analysis or FPNA. Now, the role of this FPA analyst is basically to do budgeting, uh, forecasting, and uh, I mean, these analysts are again doing it for a specific company like Johnson & Johnson's, right? So, they are inside uh, the finance team and they are doing all these exercises. So, when it comes to budgeting and forecasting, obviously, they need to forecast their own company's financials and it can be done only when they have a solid understanding of what the current business is, what type of different projects that they are uh, aligned to, what the kind of investments that are needed so they have a lot of internal data but at the end of the day again they are doing the same exercise they are doing financial modeling because it involves forecasting and budgeting so all in all if you look at a common theme that if you're thinking of making a core carrier in finance that is investment banking equity research credit research corporate finance financial planning and analysis we see that the common theme revolves around financial modeling and that's the reason you must learn this skills and uh, not only this you need to understand you know that uh, these type of tools and techniques are not exactly taught in a college environment so you have to go beyond your regular learnings and look at places where you can tangibly learn practical skills. So this financial model which I had shown you that was on McDonald's, you could see that this is completely on Excel, right? And it involves around skills where you need to know how Excel works properly, how you format the financial model, how do you go about forecasting all of this. And uh, if you master the skills, obviously you have a very big advantage over other students for getting into this careers of finance, right? Now, here are the two things that you can do to fast forward your journey in learning of financial modeling. And first thing is that refer to this website, wallstreetmojo.com, which we have created with so much of love. So the thing is that it we has complete resources on financial modeling that you would need. So here you start by understanding what is financial modeling, types of financial models. And in fact, this article which you see in front, financial modeling in Excel, it will help you create the financial model from scratch. So here we have taken an example of Colgate and we downloaded the annual report and started from scratch and created the full scale financial model the way you saw in the case of McDonald's exactly the same process you can get it for free so that's what i wanted you to look at as number one resource and another thing is that if you need more help professionally we also provide trainings in financial modeling via these uh, self-study courses as well as immersive programs so here we have this uh, uh, mcdonald's financial model which we created so we have created tutorials on how to go about it in a video tutorial kind of format, right? And along with that, we have immersive programs on financial modeling as well, where we 
give you live classes, live online classes where we teach you how to do it step by step. And there you can ask questions and answers as well. And uh, it also comes up with a lot of other advantages like you can create a model on Netflix and then send it for review. And all of that is also included. So there are various ways in which you can learn financial modeling. The thing is that you need to be prepared. So this brings us to the end of this video. As we saw, financial modeling isn't just a skill. It's your getaway to unlocking some of the most exciting careers in finance, including investment banking, equity research, credit research, corporate finance, FP&A, right? And if you found this video useful, please do not forget to hit the like button. It helps us reach more people like you and if you want to keep learning and growing in your finance journey subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming content thanks for watching and see you in the next video